Uh, hello, this is a video note about using the program QTVLM free for Mac or PC. Also has mobile, mobile uh, versions. Um, it's using that program, which is a powerful marine navigation program, one of the sta state of the art for electronic uh, navigational chart viewing and also for marine weather analysis. But I want to show a unique, uh, another aspect of the program, which is not so well known, and that is you can use it for very productive celestial navigation solutions. And so I want to do, uh, uh, show how to find a fix from two celestial sites, and I'll do it two ways. Uh, one is using a standard traditional plotting methods built into uh, historic versions of QTVLM, and then later we'll look at a, the latest version of QTVLM, v, QTVLM, which adds a feature that lets us do something even more, uh, uh, more useful for celestial navigation. So we're going to do a fix, and let's see, we'll do, a, we'll do an example out of our textbook, um, Hawaii by Sexton. This is a book that lists an actual voyage, the last voyage that I actually did using pure celestial navigation in 1982 from um, Victoria, B.C. to Hawaii, and we'll just uh, pull something out of there and use that as a real site data. And if we look in that book, Let's see, do I have that? Yeah, okay. So here is the uh, electronic copy of the book. And this is the voyage. It went from here up around, well, it, it actually started here in Victoria, out around, out the Strait of Montefuca, and across the ocean. But here was sort of a novel part of that voyage. For this whole section of the voyage, almost a week, uh, we were in a collision course with a hurricane. Um, and so that was kind of anxious going for a while. Uh, distract, didn't, well, could not distract too much from the navigation because pure celestial, you have to work hard all day. But what happened then with that hurricane is it actually dove, it's sort of funny in the end, it kind of dove down like this and came back up and actually got to Hawaii almost the same time we did, same day, but it came to the other side of the islands. So it wasn't, uh, wasn't uh, quite so bad. Uh, okay, so that is that. Let me, uh, just a picture of the view. Let me see the bookmarks I made here. Okay, so here are the sites. Uh, we're going to do problem nine. So this is a set of sites that were actually made um, July 11th, and it looks like there were four or five sites of Vega, uh, Vega, star Vega, t uh, two of Polaris, and, th and three of Venus. And so we're going to for, for this work, we're just going to do two of the sites, but you can see how to expand it. It's very easy to do three sites. And, uh, and then we're going to just look at a way. Well, this book also goes into ways, sophisticated ways that you average these sites to get the best value of each one. And so, but we're going to pull out one of these that represents the average of this set and one that pulls out the average of this set. So this is like uh, watch time. That's local time, 0605. Uh, UT, uh, that's, a, that's a local time, uh, uh, and then that has a um, sextant height of 15 degrees, so forth. Okay, so then we also have in this book, uh, this is a little bit of a review of that book as well, problem nine, where is that? Problem nine, we also solve the problems in that book, both by a calculator or computer program, actually this, our own SAR pilot program we use, and so it turns out that this is the particular site we're going to plot, and then elsewhere we shows why we end up choosing that one of the set, and then this one. So those we're going to take those two sites and then uh, find a fix. And um, normally, the way, or not normally, I would say. Normally, it depends on what year we're talking about. But these days, people tend to do a computerized the celestial navigation. But the traditional method, let's see, problem nine, where is that? Oh, it's right here. So you use a work form. This is the standard star path work form, where you fill out the work form, and then you end up with this data that's in this box, which you then go and plot. And then you plot that LOP and that LOP, and you get a fix. And that plots 
looks like this, and there is a full ongoing plot of the whole voyage here. Where is the problem nine? That's this one over here on this side. And you see here's the fix that involved uh, uh, Venus and uh, Vega and Polaris. And now I'm going to have a blow up of both a pl plotting sheet and, and the work form that we work from going forward. But this is what it looks for. You have a DR coming down here and here is apparently DR 605. And then you do the fix and then you change your DR and go on. Okay, so that's what I wanted to show out of the book itself. The book is a very good training tool for uh, celestial navigation. So here then is our, um, well, let me go back to the plot. See, here's what we're going to, this is done. This type of plotting here is done on a, um, on a, on a standard called universal plotting sheet. So you set these up and you, you normally read the, the longitude, uh, longitude minutes down here, latitude minutes here. And here are the two sites we're going to plot, these green ones. You, you plot the assumed position, then you draw a line in the direction of Zn. If I go over here and uh, let's see if I can show, well, here's the Zn right down here. Oh, I don't know if you can see the bottom one. Oh yeah, bring it up a little bit. Um, so you, you've you got uh, the, the assumed position is this latitude and longitude. This is stand, celestial navigation people, this, this is standard to them. But you plot the assumed position, that's a 35 north and this is 133, 39.3 west. And then, um, then you draw a line in direction 294 and you make a, a, a distance, you go out here a distance in that direction, 13.3 uh, miles, and draw perpendicular to that, and that's your LOP. And that, that, that's shown here in the traditional plotting. Now, what I just want to show is we can, we can do this. Um, actually, it's, I've just been interrupted here in the office. I'm going to stop for just a minute, and I'll come right back. Okay, I'm back. Uh, all right, so I've shown this is the outline of what it looks like when we do it by hand on this way. But we can do actually uh, more uh, precise plotting if we do it uh, with, a, with a computer program. Okay, so looking at this now in QTVLM, I've, I've actually already plotted these, but I'll show in a minute how, how you do this. Let me just zoom into this area uh, here. Um, I, okay, so there's basically the plot. It doesn't make sense yet, but it will. And this is, so this is the AP, the, associate, the uh, assumed position of Vega, which is at 35 north, let's see, where was that? Vega, Vega, 35 north, 133, 39.3 west. Okay, so if I right click and ask for the properties of that, you see it's at 35, 0, 0, 0. 133, 39.3, and it's locked, it's right there. And so you see you can locate these positions very precisely. Then what do I want to do? I want to draw a line in direction 294, 294.3. Now on the paper plotting, we can't, we can't do 0.3, but um, on, the, on a typical, I mean, you, you can zoom the paper plotting and so forth, but as a rule on the standard, standard uh, sheets, you can't do uh, d decimals like that. But we can do it in, the, in a electronic charting, like, well, in QTVLM. Not all programs allow for a decimal, a decimal degree plotting. And then we need to draw a line that's 13.3 nautical miles long measured along that line. And so here is that line here, and if I put my cursor on this, uh, let's see, what's that say? It says it's 13.3 miles long up to that first turning point, and it's 294.3, exactly what we want. Now, this, this angle here is 90 degrees relative to this one. So if this is 293, then I have to, I have to do some math there and do uh, uh, 293, you know, 293 plus 90, correct to get to the other side, that's 24.3. 
right? Subtract 360, 24.3. So now this is my right angle, and this is my LOP for that line, like that. And to show how these are done, what you do is you just make a point. So I go here, new mark, say OK. And then what I want to do is say uh, pathway, create a pathway, give it a name. Uh, well, I don't know if this pathway is already a name. OK, and then you say start from the first mark. OK, append POIs. And then you click that one. And then click, uh, click that one, say, like that. And you're done. You're done. You could click, go ahead and put in the second one like that, and then you're done uh, like that. But here's the first one. So this one, then you have to rotate that around so that reads to, well, first of all, you put this guy at exactly the right spot. And then this one, you just rotate to 294.3 like that. And then this has to go 24 off of it. And its length doesn't matter. It's going to intersect. So that's the way, that's the way that you draw these. And with just a little bit of practice, it's very fast, very fast. So I'm going to get rid of these. I'd put the shift key down and do that and right click delete all marks. Yes. Okay. So that's the way you do that. Now one trick that I like is I go here and I, after I make that point in exactly the right spot, then I'll add a circle to that. That's exactly what how long I want that distance to be. So I get that distance precisely, 13.3. So, well, where is that? Uh, where is my 13? Oh, yeah, there it is, 13.3. Likewise, on Venus, the Venus site was a Venus. If, let's see if you can, everybody can see this. Venus is a 274, it's 074 direction with 25.0. So that should be what this that should be what this line is, uh, 25.074.1, right? And so, but then again, likewise, when I edit this, I could put that that one line at 25.0, and then the way I would do it is I can then start right here. I know this this next line has to start right there, and it's going to be 90 degrees from that, and that's the plotting. That's all you do, and you don't need those circles. You can get rid of those. But then where those two intersect, that's your fix. And then I just move this point over to be right, you know, right. Well, you can zoom up here. Let's do this. Let me move up here. Move the chart. Move the chart scale. Chart scale. Move chart scale here. Okay. So there's one mile. Okay. That's a one mile. That's half a mile. You see, uh, oh, and then this, okay, so I can put that right there. So now I can vary, well, after I, this is a random mark that I just made a right, right click, make a mark, give it that name, and then I drag it over here, and then I right click that and edit, and I get 35, 15.8, and um, 133, 48.37. Now, and that's the end. I mean, we basically got our fix that way. We did it faster and more accurate plotting than you could do on paper. Let me show here, and I'm going to show this again. This is a computer program that's going to tell us with, with, all this, with all this site data here, if all this is right, here's where your fix ought to be. 15.5 and 133.48.4. And you see there's, there's limits just in this plotting method inherent mathematical limits. But you see, we're still getting basically spot on. Okay, and I'm going to explain this in a moment. But that, that's just a proof of what the real fix really is. So in other words, we got it right. All right, so that's all I wanted to show in this part. That is how to use, how to just basically how to plot two celestial LOPs very accurately and with a, as, once you're comfortable with the program, very fast with the program, fast plotting of LOPs using a QT VLM. And now I'm going to finish this up and then come back and show you another way, uh, uh, even a very much faster way to get a CellNav solution with, uh, with this program.